Black Top Podcast. We on a Black Top. We balling. I got uh, Jay Red with me. T Walker, the Boss Talker. Yes, Belly Boys. Belly, Belly Boys. Belly Boys. With your chest, baby. Belly Boys. In the building. Yes, um, sir. What, but what Belly Boys got popping? What we got going on? Man, what we don't. What we don't. What don't we got popping, bro? We got everything popping. Got what? the food. We got the liquor. We got whatever you need. What y'all cooking there? What's y'all? What's y'all best recipe? What is the burger? The serving turf fries? Man, you know the whole. You don't know the whole menu, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know a little <laughs> something. You know what I'm saying it was good when I came. You know what I'm yes, saying sir. when I tapped in. We um, man, we we just keep creating different concepts, man. It's like um, our I, name. I think our number one has got to be our serve and turf fries, mm, our pineapple, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's he's true. I just like the surf and turf fries is like your baby that just became so popular. You just like just true. Just get on there, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense like that, but <laughs> they is hot. For mine's, I personally like our uh, loaded pineapples. The loaded pineapples. Yeah. And what y'all, what got y'all started in the restaurant industry? Like, was y'all cooking growing up, and y'all always had a passion for cooking, or how'd y'all get started? Man, that's a good question. Um, last time someone asked me that question, I I spoke in the first part of it. So I'm gonna let Jay Red go this time. I don't remember that, but uh, we just. We was homies, man. We just wanted to start cooking together because we love to cook. So, really, when we met each other, we linked up, and we was just like, hey, bro, you like to eat? Yeah, I like to You like to cook? I like to cook. And we just started cooking and eating. Mm-hmm. That's really, yeah. and we was like, we have to go into business because, real talk, everybody that ate our food was like, damn, bro, y'all really be throwing down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, we was just like, let's do it. Every time. Every time, we, we they was trying to put kids. us against each other, but we was like, nah, bro. We together, we as like a fucking juggernaut mm. coming through, just running through shit. Cause together we can just make magic. So how'd y'all get started as far as um, funneling sales and started um, selling your product to the to the customers? Did you oh, that's all doing? T Walker, the hustler over there. Yeah. Talk to me, T. Walker. All right, so check it out, man. So, winter of 2021. Winter of 2021. And in the middle of the pandemic. In the middle of the mud. We, um, we every year you got New Year resolutions, right? Mm-hmm. So, like I, like Jared said, we've been talking multiple times about how we want to, you know, let's let's get this business going. Let's let's cook. Right? Like every year, there's one conversation that we have. Like, yo, let's do it. And we're like, all right, what are we gonna do? Wings, because we are we initially are hot for our wings. Like, no one really knows how bad we are with those wings. Like the wings. Yeah, them wings was the that was the yeah. thing. So we we both happen to be like on point with our wings, right? Our own sauce, our own creation. So. We was like, all right, let's just get our wing game on point, right? And then um, the conversation got a little bit more deeper and a little bit more intimate. We was like, okay, hold on, let's let's make a resolution. You know, one time this year we're gonna do a pop up somewhere and we're gonna cook. That was that was our thing. Like we're gonna do it this time, right? And so, and at that point, I was so complacent, and I don't want to say complacent, but I've done, I had had so many businesses that I was doing that I was doing just because, and it wasn't for the passion, it wasn't for the love, it was just because I know I'm good at it, right? And just because you're good at something technically doesn't mean that's your passion, right? Um, so for us, cooking was our passion, that was our soul. So we was like, all right, cool. So one day I, I was like, you know what? Middle of the day, let me just make a meal, prep the meal, and we, it happened to be what was it the it was the burger the burger the ribeye burger the ribeye burger the signature <laughs> Belly Boys that's rib what got eye started, burger. brother. Yes. Ribeye burgers got it popping, and I made it, and it was like, I, and it was the first time ever grinding up. So what happened was we ground up a real ribeye from the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Ribeye steak. Ribeye steak. And we ground it up. And Who we, does that? Right. Come on, Belly Boys. Belly Boys. With your chest. That's different. Yeah. And we ground it up, right? And then we uh, we smoked it. smoked the burger, and then put on um, put on a bun with some lettuce on it. You feel me? Like we we put it together, and and when I bit into that damn thing, dog, I was like, man, if I had one option to get one last burger before I die, 
It'd be it, the rib eye. It'd be the rib eye burger. God damn. I know. Why I go? I don't, like, I never wanted to eat a McDonald's burger ever, ever again after I bit into that. And it just worked out, man. It, since then. Yeah. Was it intentional to start um, the business or were you just bored? You just cook some shit real quick and see how it turned out. I say it was directly intentional. Directly intentional. You know, I would say it was intentional, but it was spontaneous. My it, middle name. It just kind of just happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we've been talking, like you said, we've been, we've been talking about, we started like, oh, bro, we should do the wing business. Oh, mm-hmm. we should do this. We should do that. Yeah. And then we was just like, fuck okay, it, man, let's just try it. Mm-hmm. And... As always, you know, shout out to Moo because she, yeah, she let us come through and cook at an actual event, yeah, which really solidified us. We were like, oh, this, this, this is what it is. We can do this. Right, we, 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 we got the potential. Now, tell me about. Let me tell you something, man. When you cook, there's levels to cooking, right? You got people don't understand how many hours you put on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, your, your passion can easily go out the window after ten hours on your feet, mm-hmm. moving. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like a basketball player can run 45 minutes up and down that court, but I dare them to walk on their feet 10 hours and moving and grooving, cooking with a menu and food. Like, there's a different level to that. The combinations that you put into, man, there's levels to it. So when we experienced that heavy level of just being on our feet, that was a challenge of our integrity. That was a challenge if we really want to stay doing this or not because it's like. That's with anything, though. You feel me? I could go. I could go get the same bag three times over, but my passion and my heart was what we was doing. Facts. You know, so that was a real testament for me. And what'd y'all have going before you got into started Belly Boys? What was Jay Red and T Walker doing? Y'all had a nine to five. Y'all had little businesses. Like what was y'all doing? I mean, we've always had the entrepreneurial spirit. I know yeah, it's yeah. popular now. I know it's a like it's a big thing. Yeah. Especially within our community. Mm-hmm. Like the hip hop black community. Like mm-hmm. right entrepreneur being an entrepreneur is almost like a buzzword everybody wants to do it and it's we was already kind of doing it i shouldn't even say kind of we was already doing it Mm -hmm. and so moving into another space for us it wasn't like a big jump it was just more of not knowing the exact challenges that come with cooking, but we was already doing our entrepreneurial thing before right. we even jumped into it together. Mm-hmm. Right. A- a- matter of fact, every, just to add to that, every year I don't know, I don't know it was first. Year, it was always tax time. We we'd do like <laughs> he he knows what I'm about to say, huh? You already know what I'm about to say, out, Jay. Uh, Jay, you know, yeah. look. So every year we'll have like a quarter check. Yo, bro, I did. You know, I remember the first person I called when I hit uh when I when I hit six figures. Right. I'm like, yo, Jay. I'm a six-figure boy. You remember that, bro? Nah, I remember you yeah. was happy as a mug. I was mug. happy as a mug. I'm a six-figure boy, self-made. I was I was elated about that, right? I mean, because it was self-taught, self-made, self-driven. Coming I mean, from the bottom. From the dirt. I mean, I'm like the worm coming out that mud that grew into that rose from the concrete. Like, And it's the same thing for J-Red. Like, well, I, mean, we, I mean, technically... Where we're at in life right now, we ain't, we we're supposed to be here, right? People say we ain't put nah, man. Whatever God planned and predestined for us, mm-hmm. we just say thank you. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yes, sir. So every year we would we would be like, oh, we did this, you did that, like oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like encouraging, empowering one another. And then when Belly Boys came about, it was like man, bro. And and the thing about it between him and I is the notoriety, right? between each other it's no i'm better than you you better than me you you make more than me i make more than you it's genuine bro i'll mm-hmm. take a dollar before i sit here and let this man take less than me mm-hmm. you know success is unlimited we see a lot of hatred and, and, and hate going on nowadays yeah. when somebody blow up over the next person you feel me but your time is always going to come yeah you know because if god you know has it for you he's going to have it so right um what were the biggest challenges you know um getting into the restaurant industry food cooking industry uh, I still say the biggest challenge personally I think it's really just budgeting budgeting mm-hmm. because I've, mm-hmm. as of right now we all know food is high as like buying <laughs> food is high yeah. as shit <laughs> and it fluctuates and it, and it yeah. but so trying to like keep it balanced to where we're just buying the right amount but still making a good profit that's that's a big challenge bro like, 
it's, I don't, it's tough. I don't do the shopping. I've got fired from doing that job. <laughs> yeah, see, me, I'm all about, you know, Keeping budgeting. The value. I'm all about trying to find the right price for the best quality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to decrease the value. Yeah. Yeah, no, we always want to keep the high quality because our food is quality. Mm-hmm. Let that be known. Let that be a fact. Inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Like, <clears throat> we always want to keep up our quality as far as, you know, the stuff that we're giving the customers, you know what I'm saying? Like, we never want to um, downplay that. So that is a challenge in itself of trying to find good quality food for the right price because food has skyrocketed. Since we started, we started at the very wrong time. I'm not going to lie to you. We started. It was if, we if we would have started when we were, when we originally wanted to, we would have probably went way up and more than where we're at right now, but it's all good because yeah. there's still there's still ways to you know get to it and make money and still give customers the best experience possible because that's what it is about. That's what it's all about. Satisfying your customers, right? Yeah. What are the biggest challenges when it comes to customers? You ever you ever get a customer like, man, this shit? Was, I want my money. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's. It. <laughs> People are people, bro. Professionalism yeah. is it, it, in the restaurant. Maintaining well, it is the biggest thing. And I, what I want to do is I want to clear, like, we're, we're not a restaurant, mm. but we cook. Mm-hmm. Um, we're food vendors, and uh, food vending and catering. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, and food content creators, because I don't want to discredit a restaurant, to be honest with you, because I know how much a restaurant puts into being a restaurant. Mm-hmm. So we get the luxury to pick and choose when and where we do this, You're right? Mobile. So um, first and foremost, anyone that has a restaurant, owns a restaurant, and is consistently operating, I, I just tip my brim to y'all, man, because it's not easy. It, Hell no. It's not easy. And we are still in the platform of discovering our niche, right? Mm-hmm. Discovering who the belly boys are, but that's because there's so much to it. You know, like there's so much to the belly boys and it's a humbling, it's a humbling, it's a, you know, elevating. And also it's an enlightening experience. Every single time we do an event, we discover something different about ourselves in in ourselves in our crew and in the food, you know, and that's something that you can't take back. When you find someone, tell you, you had the belly boys for the first time and you ate Two separate turf <laughs> fries, bro, and a yeah, ser- ri- signature ribeye burger. Hell bro. Yeah, I, I mean, I never seen some. <laughs> yeah, I did, bro. I don't know how you did that. Yeah, you <laughs> killed both of them, bro, That's in a right. matter of like less than ten minutes. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, but like as far as customers, we've had our ups and downs with customers. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I think I would say ninety percent of our customers. Satisfied. Or satis- no, more than satisfied because we really bring an we really bring an experience. We really bring a vibe, right? To to our food and to our pop ups. So we always try to like you know just because I feel like our motto is food that fills the soul. Yeah, yeah. So we really try to really bring a vibe of um like enrichment, joy and, yeah. Yeah, and enrichment it's, to it's, our customers. So it's bigger than the food. It's the spirit as well. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, and I feel like, honestly, like, when a customer tastes our food, I mean, you taste every, I, I don't know if it sounds weird, but I feel like you taste every enlightenment of that that, that meal that's prepped, mm-hmm. whether it's the burger, the lettuce. I mean, you taste every piece of it. So mm-hmm. for, for, for you to be able to taste every piece of the meal that you eat, it's a different level to it, you know? So, like, when you say, like, prime example, you can go to McDonald's, right, and you can order the same double-double cheeseburger. <laughs> Right, yeah. even In and Out, In and Out has their own texture, mm-hmm. right? But you taste on the on the one hand, In and Out, you taste every level of that meal. The Belly Boy's signature burger, you taste every element of that meal. Jack in the Box Press, just Jack in the Box. You just hungry. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, you just hungry. You just want something right. quick, just right? Quick. And so, what we've been able to do is consistently keep that texture of our food, our, the way we prep it. Like, bro, I've I've seen, I've went back there to work. I'll take orders, right? And uh. The order's about to get kicked out. I'm like, nah, bro, that's not it. And it needs to be, Jerry, like, nah, that's, yeah, you, you missing this, this, and that. Like, we won't send it out. I'll have a customer wait a little bit longer to get the consistency versus get the, the time out. You know what I'm saying? And that's just something that 
we've come to the point where we're like, you know, consistency is more important because that's our brand. Mm-hmm. What Frank Luke would say, that's my brand. That's my brand. Hell yeah. 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 Blue magic. Blue magic. <laughs> Belly boys. Yeah. Belly boys. Who was y'all first pop-up? What event was it? That was or, the, was or in front of a store storefront or something like that. No, that was the the one we did with with Moo. Um, oh yeah, Mo- and, uh, well, first pop up, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I mean, that was the first on our time own we- or on your own. Well, oh, okay, well, own. go ahead and talk about the or first one we did. Yeah, do, do, do well, show show Moo some love, like, cause no, yeah, first one we did was with Moo. That was in Rancho Cucamonga at the. Um, Rancho Cucamonga pop up night. Rancho 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 Cucamonga market night or something okay. like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and how was that? How was that experience? It was great, man. That it was, was dope. The, it was it was the reason we kept going because we had such a positive, um, yeah, experience. We didn't think, make any money though. I think we sold like twenty burgers. So well, it was cool. Yeah, we didn't make no money. No, we didn't make no money. Not a penny. Yeah. But but you, you it still, was fun. You, but you it still went back out there again, though. Yeah. Well, no, oh, we, of course, because we saw the response yeah. to our food, and and when you see people are, who are eating your food, and they're like, "Oh my god," yeah, like when they bite into it and they say that, "Oh my god," oh, oh. <clears throat> belly boys, oh, that like that, yeah, that motivates you to keep going. Yeah. So it was good. It was a it was a small event. It wasn't a lot of people. But it was a lot pe- for our account, though, to be honest. Like, for never cooking on that platform like that. But, uh, yeah, I, was, I mean, it was, yeah. well, yeah, I should say, yeah, for our very first time. First time ever. 15 to 20 people. It was somewhere like 15 to 20 customers. Using a griddle, too. Like, we never use it. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> like it was our I'm first time to do? doing everything. Uh, so, so uh, her, her company is called Eight Is Enough, right? Uh, I think she has eight kids, and she just her her concept is eight enough. She cooks for a family and friends. She does big events. Yeah, she's a guru. She's a mogul. She cooks for like Trey songs and all them, right? So, yeah. um, her sister, I happen to do the marketing for, her, right? And she's like, "Yo, you you really want to cook?" I'm like, "Yeah, I want to cook." She's like, "All right, well, I'm gonna give you my sister number." She's like, "She she does this, does this." Mm-hmm. You know, LA girls when they say they does this, does this, you got to take it seriously because like there's no playing around with it. So mm-hmm. she was like, "Yo." All right, so she hit us. She's like, all right, meet us here at this time. She said, meet me here at this time and bring enough food to prepare for how many people? She said, 50 people. 50 people. We was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. But 50 people sounds like a lot. Yeah, niggas went to the store, huh? Oh, we was in bro. the store for real, bro. <laughs> we was like, yeah, that's when I got fired. Just imagine, you, <laughs> just imagine you, you sitting on your couch at home and somebody's like, oh, yeah, just bring enough food to prepare for 50 people. You're like, damn. Yeah. 50 people. You don't know how many burgers they're going to eat. You Bruh. Know how many serving turf fries they need. At that point, I don't even think we had serving turf fries. We just had the burger. The burgers, we did it. We did it. What was the sick? It was we, just. We, no, we just had the, the burger and the fries. We had our Belly Boys signature fries, which is just the Belly Boys, the, 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 the rosemary yep. seasoned fries yep. Yep. with the with our sauce and with cheese and with some green onions sprinkled yes. on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No bacon. Mm. No swine mm. at the time. <laughs> And so we was like, damn, 50 people. Like, she said, just prepare enough for at least 50 people. We were like, damn, 50? And you got to look, tell you got to understand, like, that's 50, 50 people. That, I mean, that's at least we 20 actual ribeye steaks yeah. that need to be shredded up. Yeah. Sater Brothers, like, don't ever bring your ass back there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there um, any type of accounts you can um, get where grocery stores? That way you get, like, a discount off. Buying in bulk or anything, or you just go to the store and buy? I'm still trying to find out, bro. You can find out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is, yeah. like, there is, but but we haven't tapped in all the way with that yet. And, and to his account, like, you got to, some some spots, you can, like, I'll be honest with you, bro. If you want the best fries price-wise, I'm not going to go to Restaurant Depot. Like, there's places like Restaurant Depot. Winko. There's uh, Winko. Winko's are shit, though. Winko? Okay. We rock with Winko Tough. Yeah. But then there's... um. There's places like Sam's Club, right? We're going to get our fries for 70 cents a pound at Sam's Club. We can go to Restaurant Depot. We can go to any mega Cisco. You're getting them at least 80 to 90 cents a pound. Mm-hmm. So all that all that, all that, that adds up. Like yeah. You really want to focus on, when it comes to buying the food, you really want to try to get it the cheapest possible. There's people that we've met along the way who have real connects, 
like, I remember one homie was like, yeah, man, I get my chicken wings for like 80 <laughs> cents a pound. I yeah. said, bro, oh, yeah, wait, bro. hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, uh, shout like, out uh, mm-hmm. King's Wing King. What's his? Uh, King, I don't even remember. King's of LA, Wing King's like, LA, yeah. Bro, we, we need to tap in with you. He was just like, uh, he just hit me with the blank face. Yeah, I was ready to hit him up in the bathroom. Like, yo, where's your connect? Well, yeah, bro. Hey, I was get to, a gym, yeah, so. I was trying to get him like yeah. it was a plug for real. Like, yo, where's the wing connect that, bro? <laughs> Bro, I'm like, hold up. You're talking about some 80 cents a pound. We 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 could use that. Are we paying two dollars and at the time, two dollars and eighty-nine cents a pound. Damn. That's so that, a big that means like your chicken, like your your chicken drum, bro. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm your chicken drum has to cost you one chicken costs us mm-hmm. two dollars mm-hmm. for one. Mm-hmm. I'm no one dollar for one. Right. And so, to, yeah. So you're just really I mean, like when it comes to buying the food, you're really just trying to get the best return on investment, the best mm-hmm. ROI possible. So you're really just trying to, yeah. you know, yeah. get it for as the best price you can and then sell it at a price to where it's not going to hit people over the head. Because, I mean, like I said, food's high everywhere. So you're trying to, we're trying to get our name out there and everything too and not you know, go too crazy on the prices, well, but price, yeah. also at the same time, we got to make money. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fine line that you're trying to balance, yeah, but yeah, yeah, man, trying to find them prices, like with trying to find like a wholesale <laughs> and all that. Yeah. It's the, it's available. Shout out all them shows with EBTs. Holla at your belly boys. Hey. <laughs> 50 cents to the dollar. You know what I'm saying? I got <laughs> you. I got diapers on deck. <laughs> hey, y'all ever got a customer? Cause even when I go to food vendors sometimes, they say like, yeah, twenty five for the meal. You get this and this. You ever get a customer like, damn, like, oh yeah. Do oh, you bring down bro. your no. value to compensate, or do you just <laughs> how you deal with it? I mean, we do fight about this kind of stuff. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. Oh, you fight about what? Oh, we because <laughs> I'm, I'm Tracy all about trying to get the customer. I'm all about, <laughs> bro. We need our money back, <laughs> right? All day, every day. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I mean, all right. So check it out. We we. We we just did taste the song. Right? There's some people who are over the top with it though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, give like, me give me a real life example of what I just said. Okay, and how y'all reacted to it. Riverside. At the oh, art, he was- at the art <laughs> at the art uh at the we did an art show. Uh, there was this old that, man there, bro. Hey, Diddy Bob, you remember that one, right? Yeah. Hey, c- let me let me just get the fries. How much the fries? Remember the Riverside? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Talk Yo, to look, me. Talk look, to look. me. Come on, bring Diddy Bob back. Bro, he <laughs> just. People just remember he was like, let me let me just get the the fries. No, 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 no. He look, you remember that dude? Remember he's like he want the fries. He was like, he was like, how much is it for just the meat? <laughs> <laughs> that Bruh. nigga wanted the patty. <laughs> how much is it for just the meat? He, he threw said, it on the table like here, right? nigga. Bruh. Bruh. Like, Don't worry about it. Yeah, he, he was, <laughs> was like, damn, how much for just the fries? <laughs> <laughs> and then he came back. Then he then he left. That's when you know people like this is a real life situation. Yeah, he left yeah, yeah. for like an hour. He came back though. He came back like, "Yo, can I get my shrimp?" I'm like, "Bro, the shrimp." The so he ended up buying five shrimp. Yeah. Five was pieces like, of shrimp for five. He was like, bucks. "Bro, how much can I get? How can how much can I just get five shrimp for?" We was like, "Uh, bro, we ain't. Uh, we'll just <laughs> give him. All right, bro, five dollars. All right, five bucks." And he was like, "All right." He disappeared. We made five shrimp. He disappeared for like an hour. And then he came the back. Just popped up. But like. he came back for his shrimp, right? Yeah. This is the thing that just I just knew Buddy was just like off a little bit. Like, yo, he came back for his shrimp. And then he got his shrimp. I'm like, bro, let me, let me, you know me. I'm I'm very like, we're all customer friendly. Let me warm these up for you. Let me throw them back on the griddle real quick. Yeah, let me yeah. get them warm. No, nah, no, nah, I'll eat them cold. Huh? All right, bro. You sure? No, like I'm telling you, it's not gonna cost yeah. you. I should warm yeah. it up. I ain't got a microwave. I got a hot griddle over it. Nah, it's cool. I just I just eat it cold. And then when my man bit, oh, these, these is good. These, these is fine. I'm like, all right. Thank you, brother. Then he walked away, belly boys. He said that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That was right. kind of weird. <laughs> so that was the weirdest, I think, for. Is that the weirdest? Uh-uh. I was, I was thinking about that old man at the art gallery. Oh. That old man, he, before we even had the event. He was there, and he was just like, well, "So when, uh, so when, uh, when you make these burgers, right? Um, 
<laughs> Is he? You know how the old black men that yeah. we'll make these birds right up. <laughs> it take a long you, time you, to breathe. You uh, <laughs> you put onion on it. <laughs> it's like yeah. He's like wait 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 wait. So like it's uh, like a fresh onion. I said no. We grill our onion. Oh, I like we, grilled onions. Oh, I said we grill all our onions, sir. He was like oh, oh okay because you know that fresh onion. That fresh onion is. Uh, I was like huh that fresh onion. <laughs> You don't like fresh onion? No, I don't really like fresh onion. Because he kept growling. Like, I don't know what he was saying, but, you know. You know sound old. like he, <laughs> DMX when he get older. And so, <laughs> I want a burger. And so he was like, okay, okay, I'm going to have to check y'all out. I'm going to check y'all out. So the day comes of the event. And he, he did keep his word. He came. He was like, all right, I'm, I'm, y'all got that burger for me, right? He was like, yeah, we got you, man. He was like, he was like we got you. He was like, all right, how much is it going to cost me? And it's twenty five dollars. <laughs> it's like for what <laughs> for what you want, bro. It's twenty five dollars. He was like twenty five, twenty <laughs> five. He said twenty five. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, bro. You know yeah, what? Yeah. For you, twenty. I I said for you. Oh, you took the price down. Yeah, we did. We for did. him. Yeah. Okay. For him, we took it. Bro, he, I'm saying he said twenty. He's twenty five. He said that yeah. shit like ten times. <laughs> yeah, in our face. <laughs> And so we was like, all right, bro, for you, I think we ended up giving to him for like 15. Because mm-hmm. he, he did it after that. 20. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> it was it was real. Though. Like, you know, like. And then he ate it. And he was like, mm, this is good. But I don't know if I would spend 25. I was just like, I was just like. <laughs> all I, I, right, I, bro. We got a concept with our burgers, bro. Like, we feel like. We uh bro, this is real ribeye steak. It's yeah, not it's not it's like not the patty you just take out the yeah, yeah. out the fifteen pack of the of the frozen hamburger, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he I don't know. That shit was funny though, because yeah. he was an older he was probably like sixty five, seventy, I don't know, somewhere Still around. Still no there. excuse. But, he just he just was malnutrition in his diet, bro. Like mm-hmm. sixty five, I don't I I pray to God that at sixty five my health and my—I look like prime example. My auntie, my grandpa, my dad, like my my elders, sixty-five. They are sharp. You know what I'm saying? You know, pops. Mm-hmm. You know, like my elders at sixty-five, they could probably beat some people in in a in a, in a mile, easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. and outwit them. So I just—that's another thing about our food. And off topic. I mean, it's not off topic, but we're not saturating you, like especially our burgers. It's. A good it's quality a, burger. Yeah, it's a good quality burger. I it's mean, the highest of quality burgers. Highest bro. of high. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I've had burgers from Chris. Like it's it's cool. It's a good burger, but I feel like our burgers compete with the best of the best. Mm. We haven't gotten no competitions, but I feel like we could. Who wants the? F- hold on, let's just clear the air. Who want the burger fade? Oh, nobody wants that fade. Who, I look. Who want the burger fade? I'm just being a buck right now. Who really wants a burger fade? With our sauce, man, they don't want it. Y'all had the partnership with your uh, with your boy, uh, Chef Trendy. Yeah, that's his Trendy name. Chef. Trendy, Trendy Chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what a food content creator. Yeah, Trendy Chef. Shout out T. He's a celebrity chef. Yeah, celebrity yeah. chef. Right now, I think my boy in New York doing a uh, celebrity. I think he might be doing a TV show right now. Out oh, wow. New York. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look. He's a he's a real real live like Jimmy, trained. Yeah. World renowned chef. Yeah. Very genuine dude, bro. Mm-hmm. Like to the bottom of the bottom. Like really, really, really genuine. He put us on his TikTok platform and we was before we even before, started before our we, company. It name. was really it was literally like right after our first pop up. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. Oh, y'all wanna come too? Where, where's your phone? You can pull it up right now if you wanna pull up. Yeah, check it out. So I call him T, you know what I'm saying? Um his name is Trinity Chef. So he literally shot us uh this is how we met, though, right? Mm-hmm. We, um, I was selling my house, and uh, when I was selling my house, he uh, happened to be one of the people that was going to come by my house. Oh, wow, okay. okay. So, now, I did not know this dude was going to come and uh, to my house. Now, again, I love cooking. I've been cooking for years, mm-hmm. but I, I would follow the people that were, like, you know, moguls or icons that I would like to be influenced by right Mm -hmm. so i would watch i followed tc right so i i'm up here and there's like yo my realtor was like yo um i uh 
I got somebody that's a celebrity that wants to come by your funeral. I'm like, all right, cool. All right, whatever. So there was like four celebrities that already came to my house to buy my food. And so he, she was like, nah, this guy, you kind of want to, she knew I like to cook, right? So she was like, yo, I think you want to see this person, right? I'm like, all right, cool. So she, um, she brings the dude over, right? And as I'm walking out, mind you, this is in the morning. I'm like in my shirt, dirty drawers, old school sweats, <laughs> busted yeah. t-shirt, right? Yeah. You know, I'm at home, bro. Uh, you've been to the pad, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's land, land. It ain't like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like a, uh, it's you know, it's, yeah. So I'm like, cool. So I'm seeing this dude walk up on the horizon of my property. I'm like, yo, that, is that, is that Trini Chef? And I'm like, yo. What are you doing prior? Yeah, I'm like, yo, that's, that's, yo, Trini Chef. And I guess he's come through to it, right? People obviously know who he is. I'm like, yo, bro, I, I, I bump with your food. Mm. But then the thing about it was like, yo, I cook. You know, I cook too. I just, this is a week after we did our food event with uh, Eight is Enough, Mumu. And then this the celebrity. The first pop-up. Yeah. The first pop-up happened the weekend before. Then this celebrity walks into my front door. Bro, no one told me to tell. No one told him to come here. No one paid him. No one. The energy in the universe, right? The energy in the universe circulated this person to my front doorstep. It was a sign. You know, divine sign. intervention. Kismet. Yeah, definitely had to be a sign. Yeah. And from there, the dude's been so genuine and solid. He was like, yo, bro, pull up. Let's, let's, let's get something going. Like, let me see what you got. And this is the first video that we actually did. You want to see it? Mm-hmm. You, could, you could probably, I don't know if you want to. Turn it around, but Belly Boys in the building, baby. Oh, I seen this one. I seen this one. And that was our salmon uh, surf and turf. That put the the gold on there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, We did the twenty four karat salmon gold. Yeah, the twenty four karat surf and turf fries. Twenty four karat gold. Twenty four karat gold. Y'all was real with it, huh? Oh yeah, you feel me? Hey, I'm just saying. Yeah. And that was like. Our first time doing a TikTok. Ever first doing a TikTok. It was like, and he was just real cool. Because, I mean, I pulled up to his house first. I didn't even know him. Yeah. And I, I'm over here calling Trace like, bro, where you at? Yeah. Bro, where you at? Right. Like, I'm already here. He's like, bro, just go up to the door. And I was like, you know, because you know how it is with, with us. We don't yeah. random people come up to your door. I mean, he knew he was coming, but he don't know me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a tall Dude, so I, you know, people might feel like a ways, so. but I went up there. He was cool, <laughs> you intimidated or something. Right, right. Well, yeah. you, just, you just never know. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I see some big dude come up to my door, I'm Ice like, uh, black ass thing coming to my door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, Khalif, but, come. But he was cool. <laughs> he was cool. He was like, "Oh, what's up, man? I'm trendy." Like he, yeah. You can tell he's he's around people a lot because he just made it super comfortable. Very sociable. Very yeah. social. And he was, um. um he was like, let me get that. Oh. And he was like, uh, just chilling. Like, and he, was, and he gave us a lot of game. He gave us every. He he's showed been us a lot us about, a lot of yeah. Game. Like, T showed us a lot about. Um, I, I always tell him, I was like, bro. So for me personally, like, I, my background is marketing. My background is website design, content marketing, content exposure, right? Uh, Google Maps, SEO. Like, that's what my background has been for the past. 10, 10 years. You know, I spoke for UCLA about local SEO, Syracuse University about local SEO. So when it comes to marketing, that's what I do, right? So, but one thing about me is I have to always be a student. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't sit and sit there. I told you the other day, I was like, yo, tell, I, I learned from you, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally am a student from every person that has that's something that I can I can gain from. Yeah. And I don't want to take, it's not take, right? It's it's an equal level of gain, right? So if you give me some information mm-hmm. unwillingly, unknowingly, like, bro, I want to bring appreciation and light to that information. So Trini Chef, like, it was humbling to sit here and say, yo, bro, I want to, I don't know how to do a TikTok video. Mm-hmm. Straight up, like, mm-hmm. I had no knowledge. But you guys had somebody that already, that had, it, was ar- it was already going. At that time, no. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, it, it was yeah. just, it was just me and Jared yeah. with a mind. Yeah. Um, I, 
I he wasn't even thinking about but he, TikTok, but, bro. But what I'm saying yeah. is he introduced you into a different world of right. what you can do. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. With the, with the food vendor business, right? So 100%. He, he was already doing content creation. Now, he I know you, your, your background is marketing, mm-hmm. but what kind of marketing were you guys doing for, for Belly Boys before Trendy was introduced into you guys? I don't even think, did we? We, we had started you, it. We were, we were, only thing we had really done was start our Instagram page. Mm. Were you posting every day? We, At that time, we were posting. What? We had posted the little event that we did, and we posted a couple little taste videos. I went crazy after that, though, bro. Yeah. I went, I went, I went on. Like I, there's a thing about me, bro. Like it, when it comes to grinding, I enjoy the ambiance of grinding, mm-hmm. right? Embrace it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm that guy that still cold calls, fifteen hundred cold calls a week. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. for my business, my marketing company. I'm that guy that. I can sit there next to my closer and go go one for one with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's me. So when it came to the food industry, I was like, yo, let's go. I was like, yo, Jay, I'm going to go make my burger and go pass out to the different barber shops. <laughs> I'll go pass out to the tire yeah. shops. Like, And then I gave it away for free. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, oh, this is good. Mm-hmm. And at the time, right, Check this out. This is how the universe brings stuff back full circle. At the time, they was like, yo, bro, I ain't going to pay $10 for this. Every time they would say that, I was a bite of the burger. And I'm like, yo, it's, it's all good. Just take the bite of the burger. Let me get a picture of you biting the burger. And tell me your honest opinion. And that's when we came up with the concept of body and taste buds, right? One and oh, two and oh, three and oh, four and oh. I think we might have bodied George too, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, but so. We bodied them for sure. Bodied them, right? Bodied them, yeah. So at that time, I didn't care. It, I didn't care about you saying um, you didn't want to buy it. I know everyone ain't going to buy this eventually. I just need you to say it's good in front of this camera, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And once you say it's good, the next person look at you and say, hmm, damn, That's exposure. I, I got to try that. Yeah. I got to try that. Mm-hmm. I got to try that. Eventually, everybody wants to try that. And then when the belly boys do a pop-up, guess what? Mm-hmm. Everyone want to be there. Mm-hmm. So at that, at that time... All we were doing was perfecting what we had. And the only thing we really had was that one ribeye signature burger. Mm-hmm. And, we well, had, and then we switched. I mean, then we just went yeah. crazy with it. Yeah. Uh, so it was like, oh, the ribeye. Yeah. Oh, you know what we like? I was like, you know what I like? I like salmon burgers. You know yeah. what? Let's oh, make a salmon come burger. Come on. <laughs> salmon, 24 yeah. you know karat what? gold, yeah. surf and tur- Come on, man. You know what? Bomb loaded fries. You know what? Let's make. Oh, you ever put shrimp and bacon on fries? Yes. Oh, surf and turf fries. Surf and turf. And that's been yeah. our number one seller since we've since. invented it. What's your number one seller? Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, easily, it has to be our number one seller because, I mean, people go crazy over that thing. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Real talk. We we went to taste, uh, not taste, we went to um, Black on the Block, mm-hmm. Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. Bro, we sold out of fries and shrimp. I thought I had bought enough. Hell no. I was nowhere near enough. Yeah. Imagine just having a deep freezer, right? Mm. About six feet high, worth of fries, bro. Damn. Just imagine. Sold that. out, too, huh? Uh, three pound bags. Gone. Damn. Gone. That's crazy. Yeah. You get them at 80 cent, though? Nah. Nah. nah, nah. nah. <laughs> Damn, we get them by a dollar. Nah, 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 we was, yeah. nah, we was buying the wrong nah, bags. Nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We was definitely. Because hey, well, we yeah. were trying to do uh, curly fries, criss cut fries. Bro, we, yeah. We. This is a learning, like, we still learning. Yeah, that's we're just a learning curve. We're still newborns to be a yeah, buck, yeah, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, and that's the thing people don't realize about entrepreneurship. People think, oh, it sounds real good. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do it. They don't realize there's a lot of learning experience. There's a lot of cost. Be- belief, confidence. The learning yeah. costs. Yeah. It, 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 trust me. Right. That I, shit hits your pockets. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. got a master's degree so in you learning. Ha- so you have to be ready for that. Like, you have to be ready to... Really take losses. Really like you got to spend it till you make it. Yeah, yeah. you got to spend it till you people, win. But people don't realize. They think like, oh, they see you know people who are just. I, I guess it's because Instagram has everybody messed up. Because you see. You see the outcome. Mm-hmm. You don't see all the shit that went before. Mm-hmm. You don't see all the the, the the heartache and the. You don't see the, the trials and tribulations. There you go. The work. That's yeah. what I was looking yeah. for. The trials and tribulations yeah. Yeah. that. That reach you to that pinnacle of success. And let me let me tell you something, bro. Like just just to understand the like we're 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 defining the narrative, right? We're two fathers, right? Mm-hmm. With 
with two, two, two boys. I have five kids, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. That's a total of seven children to feed, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'm claiming five, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, but we're two fathers. You gotta understand, like we're two fathers with two businesses that we are that that is that is pertinent in our lives, right? Mm-hmm. That we was already doing before. Already doing well, I, yeah. Already doing before, right? With beautiful wives, right, and family. Like we, we are the we are a foundation. We are a, we are a pillar stone to our families. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And to take on this business, like, do you understand? Like how much sacrifice our family had to go through mm-hmm. for us? Still going so through. I, yes, I mean we still ain't really. We still learning. We still grinding. Yeah. But it's gonna be generational wealth, though. Yeah, to Telly give, Boy is gonna to, live forever. It's exactly. Through eternity. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, and, and that's the thing. Yeah. To give them a promise, mm-hmm. right? A promise of what we see in our hearts, mm-hmm. right? Versus what they can see in the physical. That's something that you always gonna have to give and take. That means sometimes they're not gonna see the grind when we're working, bro. We we did taste of soul oh, thirty two hours of no sleep, no sleep. Yeah, bro. We did taste of soul, and I'm telling people like. The day after we did Taste of Soul, people are hitting me up like, hey, hey, come, you know, hey, come out to eat. Come, come, come to the soccer game. Come to this. I'm on my couch. Yeah. Laying down dead. Slump. Because they don't realize for that whole week, from Tuesday to Friday. Yeah. We yeah. Did, we working all day. Our, our, our you know, our, all Normal of our other day. stuff. And then from six to midnight. Or one in the morning. Two minimum. We we in the we at this shared kitchen. Shout out to the uh, the shared kitchen in Temecula. They let us come through. Yeah. Um, when we preparing, a hundred pounds of chicken, a hundred pounds of beef, mm-hmm. belly balls, which is a a, a loaded I potato. Knew banger. Um, belly balls. Huh? We 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 preparing all this food for hours of every night, trying to get ready. So it's not just. The event that you're prepa- that you're um, grinding for, you're grinding the whole week before, right, right, ready to get to get ready for it. It's so people don't realize like what all you put into it. Yeah, they don't realize what in, what comes with it and what in, everything entails into that grind. How yeah. do you keep the belief? Um, how do you keep your beliefs going and staying confident in your business? All right, I'm gonna answer that one. So. Yeah, please do. The, the Bible <laughs> says iron sharpens iron, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's the truth. To have a, to, to me in my heart, prime example, bro. You interview Ella, La Russell, right? Mm-hmm. He's from the region. Shout out to you for that. I'm mm-hmm. from 707. I'm from the soil too. So, like, I understand. Like, the, the, like, in the Bay, it's a different type of culture. It's a different type of, persona right you got to be able to be from that type of lifestyle or culture to understand the other person's mindset right Mm -hmm. so that's one perspective but then also in being a partner right you got to have a team that thinks like you and will work as hard as you and work as hard as you reacts like you Mm -hmm. and also will pick your ass up when you fall and you down in your day when you just place Face planted down, like, fuck, I quit. We'll pick your ass up, like, no, there's no exception to quitting. Like, nah, bro, we're going we're gonna to keep pushing. We did Taste of Soul, and we were happy. We are satisfied with the outcome, right? But it was a lot of adversity that came with that, bro. And I was like, yo, J-Ray, you good? And in my mind, the way that our outcome was predicted, that I predicted his response was going to be like, oh, bro, you know, uh, this motherfucker hit me and said, yo, I'm ready. I'm better than ready to grind more than ever. And it shocked me, bro. Mm-hmm. It shocked my nerves yeah. because I thought I was going to have to give him some type of speech, right? Yeah. Right? But but I needed him to tell me that. Mm-hmm. I needed him to tell me, yo, bro, that's this is what I needed, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And usually the other way, it's the other way around. I'm like, let's, I'm giving the energy and he's reciprocating, he's bouncing off of my energy. But I needed his energy to fuel me because at that point I was like, it's a lot of damn work, bro. You know, and I don't know if that was justifying my return on investment like I would want it had to be, right? The marketing, I can, I can do the same type of energy for a whole week, and that residually, residually is going to come back for about 
the next three years, mm-hmm. right? But this, I, I lacked the mindset or that at that moment of my passion, mm-hmm. and my brother rekindled that. Like, yo, bro, I'm I'm ready to go more than ever, mm-hmm. and that shit sparked a flame in me. Like, yo, if you're ready, then it I'm ready. Motivation you feel me? You bounced off each yeah, other's like, energy. you gotta have. Yeah. The, so when you to just answer that question, mm-hmm. you gotta have like-minded people that you know. Mm-hmm. People say don't do business with people that you know. I don't. I don't agree with that. Like, if you don't know who you're going into business with, mm-hmm. then how can you know how your business outcome is going to look? Mm-hmm. And like I said in the beginning, notoriety has to be the crutch to us. Like, if I feel like notoriety, notoriety is going to humble me, then that's a good thing. But if it takes from our business, that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So my brother picked me up. You know what I'm saying? So iron sharpens iron in that exact type of perception. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I would say people say. Don't go in business with your friends or family or people right. you know. But really, all time. don't go in business with people who don't have the goal set in their mind the same way you have it set in their mind. Right. Because, like any, any, like any, like I said, any entrepreneurship, any entrepreneurial endeavor, mm-hmm. there's ups and downs, mm-hmm. ins and outs, peaks and valleys. So, as he said, you know that inv- invigorated him, and just being there and seeing the people and seeing the energy that he was giving off and the people were giving him, it was like, damn, ain't no way we can stop. Right. People are hitting me up like, oh, man, where are you guys going to be? Right. Man, I need I need to get with you guys. Like, yeah. just, And so when you see that, it's just kind of like just, it's just like, yeah, it's just like God's poking you in your back. He's like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you may not have gotten everything you wanted, right? But I'm trying to let you know this is the path you need to walk, right? I and got so you. I got you. When you when you see that, when you see that with your own eyes, it just it just hits you in a way that's that's primal. You're just like, all right, ah, no matter what it takes, yeah. Like you just have to just dig down and just really not be afraid to fail. Because failure is just a teaching lesson to success. That's it's all it learning. is. It's a life lesson, though, yeah. too. Right. You know, when you get another situation, you know what went on in the previous situation, so you know how to handle it. Right. right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Because, like, I, we we did a... Uh, True. Black on the a, block. Yeah. Black on the block. We weren't prepared all the way. We sold out. This time, we were like, oh, mm-hmm. let's get it. We about to be prepared. We about... To, bro, Over we was prepared. getting orders in. We was getting them out in less than two minutes. Get them out. Bam. Yeah. Get them in. Bam. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. We just, everything was just yep. flowing. flowing. We was like, oh, bro, that if that's all it takes, we, we got this. Yeah. 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 Once we had our structure down, bro, money was easy. It was like Floyd Mayweather said, bro, it's just, I'm robbing the bank. We was literally robbing the bank. I mean, no point intended, but yo, put your hands up mm-hmm. and put your mouth open. <laughs> yeah. Let me just put it to you like that. And it, that's. That was the most motivating thing about it that we we kind of like at that moment at that what the biggest event that we've ever done it clicked. It's and very it, important to have good partnership with whatever you're doing 100%. because um, it depends on uh, frequency. It all uh, runs off of frequency, you know. So if you get in the room, say you got uh, you know y'all starting the event, J Red having already his his. his his day already bad, but he get around T. Walker and his energy's up. His energy's gonna come up too. Right, you right. Feel me? So y'all just picking each other up. Right. And also, when you're reacting sit- to situations, like I read this book, it's called uh, "Inner Engineering" by Sad Guru. It talks about spirituality mm-hmm. and your reaction to certain situations. So really, no um, situation is stressful. Right. It's your compulsive reaction to the situation that makes it stressful. You know what I mean? Correct. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so yeah. if you always remember your end goal, like when you're cooking, That's you know, good. some a patty fall on the ground or some shit, and you feel, you feel me? It's your reaction to the situation. That's right. gonna that's what's gonna keep you going. Right. You feel me? And it's it's you. You feel me? So um That's good, bro. That's yeah. really yeah, good. Yeah. That's real talk. Yeah, that's that that's that's a really good book. Um What's t- the name of the book again one more time? It's called Inner Engineering by Sad Guru. I got it from the Russell. Le- that's Russell, who I got yeah. it from. Sad I, yeah, I asked him uh what was his one of uh his most impactful books that he's read and it was um Inner Engineering by Sad Guru. Okay. And um so also in, yeah, also in the books it talks about like being mad and, and depressive and, and shit like that. Right. You can never ever change a situation being mad. I know you're mad in the moment, but really there's no yield profit to being mad. You don't make money off being mad. 
Right. You feel me? So if you can always keep your energy up, nigga, everywhere you go, you just got smiles. Yeah. You feel me? So emotions in check is yeah. definitely key to yeah. life. Yeah. Right. It, it all comes from the mind. Everything you see in this room came from the mind. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? True. It started I mean, off as a on, thought, man. a precept. It turned into an idea, and then it turned into a podcast. Yeah. You know what there I mean? Go. So, yeah. um, and, and time and time and time and yeah. time and time yeah. over again. Yeah. You know, like the end point isn't, yeah. you know, where you're at. It's yeah. where your mind perceives that yeah. you're going. Yeah. And I really, I really believe this. I mean, I, I know it sounds simple, but I really think most people who make it, as far as like entrepreneurial endeavors, mm. it's just people who didn't quit. Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. don't stop. They always believed in themselves. You just, one thing happens, you just keep going. You just really just keep going. You keep moving. You trying to, when some something happens, take three steps back. You yeah. take another step. Yeah. You get one step. Forward, and you get those two right. steps back. You just mm-hmm. keep going. You just mm-hmm. keep going. You keep going. You just don't stop. As long as you don't stop, how can you fail? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about say, um, I want to get into um, food vending and um, serving the people. Mm-hmm. What's my first step? I'll at the deli boys. <laughs> I'm, I'm you already saying. got the blueprint. I, I God mean, damn like, it. come Shit. on now. Like, like I'll I'll tell you, and and eight is enough can contest when I. We did the first, like, bro, you got to have the mindset to change your narrative. Mm-hmm. If your mindset is not your ready mindset to change is your narrative, then how can you be successful in mm-hmm. anything? Mm-hmm. And, and again, I want to make sure people understand successfulness is not being a celebrity. It's not being a rapper, not being a musician, not being an uh, entertainer. Successfulness is what you define in your mind as successful. Everybody, Everybody's definition of success is different for sure. Extremely different. For sure. So know, know your level of success. For me... My level of success and being successful is not predicated on anyone else's mind or mm-hmm. thought, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's peace. What brings me peace? Peace and joy. Get peace there. and joy. Yeah. So if my level of success brings me joy when I can come home and yeah. I think about work and yeah. I can look at my kids, yeah. that's my success. Yeah. If my father says, son, you done well done, then that brings me joy. If I can help my cousins or my, my nieces or my, my, my aunties, for a little bit, that's mm-hmm. success for me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not notoriety in my family. It's not because they want to praise me. It's because I'm humble enough on a platform to say, you know what, I'm successful within my own heart and my mind. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? If I'm not looking at your cup, right, looking like, <laughs> a real shit. If I'm, yeah. If I ain't worried about your cup, bro, like what's in your cup? What you got? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm content with what I got in my cup. Yeah. That's a mindset that triggers successfulness, bro. Mm-hmm. That's success. You can only be su- and it doesn't mean it's money, bro, to be yeah. honest with you. It don't mean shit, man. It's for happiness some, within yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your inner self if that. Yeah. Your inner self. Yeah. And that's 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 America's Achilles heel, bro. Mm-hmm. What we've been taught even in the English e- even in our history books that we learn in school, right? Think about it. Mm-hmm. You you learn about how one person wound up the next person. One person looked at what this person had. It's, it's pol- it politics, bro. It's mm-hmm. politics, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, this person is doing well, but he wants to be better than him. This person betrayed him because of this and that. Mm-hmm. That's just the, that's been the American way. Why can't we just move off of love? Imagine if everybody you know moved off of love. You feel me? The world evolves, evolved around love. Like you looking out for me, that's love. You feel me? You doing the show with me, that's love. Right. You know, you serving the people, that's love. You feel me? If, if we can just learn how to, how to love, the universe will hey. evolve in a different way. Marvin, you know get to talk to him. Yeah, you know what I mean? So um, talk about um, the family. Talk about uh, wealth, building generational wealth. What do you see oh, in the future for Belly Boys? You know, because you, you, you guys own Belly Boys. Your kids could come work for you at any time. I borrow. You know what I mean? I borrow from Belly Boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, Belly Boys, you know. They're a big, belly uh, Boys. Big yeah. lender. Belly Boys. Yeah. Salute to Belly Boys, man. Black Top Podcast. Oh, yeah, my cup empty, bro. Run it. Run it. Run it. Toast something. Over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My cup is uh, empty. Yeah. Toast something real quick. But um, I think that. The vision of the Belly Boys is so 
There's levels to it, man. Like Shrek said, there's levels to an onion. And people don't understand. Like, they was like, yo, that's stupid. What the hell? Nah, Shrek was on point. Mm-hmm. On some real stuff, though. Like, there's levels to an onion, right? So if there's levels to an onion, imagine if that onion was a business, right? There's levels to business. So for us, we're just touching this, the surface, bro, of, of who we are, what we're doing, and what we have to offer. Like, I personally live in Mexico, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, trust and believe. Left me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro. You done left J Red. <laughs> I left J Red. J Red said I can go though. <laughs> the general said I can go. Did you not say I can go, general? Yeah, I said it. General said I can go. Yeah. When the general said I can go, that's my blessings. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was like, all right, cool. live your life though. Yeah. Live your life. Which with with the hours is best for him and his family. Man. That's all right. I care about. That's yeah. all that matters, yeah. and, and that's reciprocated. You know. So um. <laughs> Belly boys. Belly boys. Hey, talk me. about uh, living in Mexico. Right. Mexico is a totally yeah, different crazy. country. You're going to a country where they work hard as fuck and they respectful and they have a whole different culture mm-hmm. versus coming from um, America. So, what differences do you see from the U.S. than um, Mexico? Bro, centuries. It's night and day. It's 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 night and day to a point where. Because they're not really tuned into social media and shit like that. Anymore. Not really. Yeah. I mean, you, you can go to, like, Mexico City and certain mm-hmm. areas where, you know, there's there's they're in tune. Like, I, where I live, it's not, like, um in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's in uh, near Puerto Vallarta, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So everything out there is... It's a nice-ass area. Yeah, it's, it's oh, very... Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it's nice. It's sociable. He came to visit. You know, it's very, cool. very... Come visit, very, shit. It's very comfortable, you know, it's... To say the least, it's uh, life is. It's a nice area. Yeah, it's very nice. I would. What, what would you? What would you compare to? Where I? Well, it's the same city that I lived in to the city out here, Jared. Uh, compared to like a, was it like Calabasas? Good, like mm, not quite Calabasas. No, I would say like a Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa. Mm-hmm. like right near the beach, but like it's like really nice, but not. Yeah, I would say like Newport, uh, downtown Newport Beach kind of concept. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Orange County. Yeah, Orange actually. County-ish, but without the Orange County. Yeah, you know without the <laughs> bouginess of it. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like the, what, middle class yeah. kind of living? Uh, living? Where we live, I think it's the higher. Higher end. Yeah, but yeah. but there's still more levels to it, right? Like, I'll say middle class Mexico. Okay. Talk about um, optimizing the value of your dollar. Oh man, Dude. talk about that. Oh man, like as far as Mexico, yeah, like Mexico's peso is lower than the U.S. Yeah. dollar. Yeah, right now. So the Mexico peso. I'm sorry. Hold on, I'm gonna show you guys something. Um, this is my uh, Mexican bank account. Oh shit, they do. Oh, they got a visa. Shit. Oh yeah, come on, the visa is worldwide. I thought <laughs> they told you that already. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, Inter- you go. The processing yeah. system. Intercom, right? Yeah. So check out. Intercam? So this intercam. Intercom, intercam. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this banking account, right, that I have, mm-hmm. that intercam, gives me um seven percent compound interest. APY? Seven percent? Yes. Sir. Damn, that's crazy. Okay. Now I they also offer seven I'm s- excuse me, ten percent on their CDs. Okay. Certificate of deposit. So if yeah. I if I take this account and I go and invest a thousand dollars, not let's just be realistic, okay? Let's say I hypothetically put fifty thousand dollars into this savings account, CD account, and it shows a yield of twelve a ten percent over the next twelve months. What's my return on investment? Five thousand dollars, right? That's correct. Five bands. Five bands. That's that's correct. Yeah. So tell me what CD in the United States is going to be five grand in twelve months. Tell me what banking account system in the United States is going to no give you. No bank account. Wait, hold on. I, what banking account is going to give you a compound interest of 7%? No. So the Amer- no. America gives you one zero point one. What zero point one percent Yeah, I've seen Marcus by Goldman Sachs like 0.5, but. I mean, but still, what, yeah. what is that? No, yeah, nothing. nothing. <laughs> on your savings account, bro. On your savings, not, yeah. That's not even your general. Yeah. So my return on investment of my dollar in this in in the Mexican 
economics is going to go way further. Way further. You can utilize it in um, the United States as well. Correct. So ah, let's say, damn. for example, so That's what we're doing right, right now is we're trying to create a investment funding account. I was talking to Jared about it a little bit. I was mm-hmm. talking to uh, my boy Snook about it. We call it BISO, right? So BISO is the, the whole concept is to invest money into this this uh, corporation's LLC, right? Mm-hmm. And then what we do with that LLC is we go buy property in Mexico, invest in the property in Mexico, and then also what that does is develop the economics in that in that country mm-hmm. where they can hire employees, workers, you know, mm-hmm. uh, engineers, like th- the level grounds, and then bring money back to that community on a genuine level, right? When you buy pro- t- and and to be honest, like Mexico has two different perspectives, right? They they're like, hey. You're trying to gingerfy what we're doing. And then there's another part of the community that feels like, yo, you're bringing equity to our community, which gives us employment that they've never received mm. in a long, long, long I time. I mean, it's the same thing all these huge companies exactly. are doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just on a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you, where do you, these companies that, these big companies out here in America, they don't, all their, they, don't, they don't work. They don't have their main warehouses out here they have them in china they have them mexico. in india sweatshops and mexico shit like, that, like yeah they're they're paying pennies on the dollar right nike they they ain't paying <laughs> nigga they shirts is five dollars they're selling for 25 and shit like nah, that they're not even they're five dollars bro 50 cents what that, they're not even look okay you gotta understand about pennies on the dollar versus pennies. what they're what oh they're, my god they have making. cotton farms in malaysia I, do the research the the content that they make, like, you don't like the same Nike shirt is not made out of cotton anymore, bro. It's made out of plastic. The same thing that we recycle and the materials that it's meshed together now. It's not even cotton anymore, bro. Look at the stat. It'll say 50% polyester. You know what poly- polyester is? Plastic mm-hmm. and other materials combined together. And like 20% cotton, right? But since cotton's on it, they can say it's cotton, right? But that's been remanufactured. So they're buying our recycled goods. From America, bro, recycling in Malaysia and then printing it out to us, manufacturing and reselling them and selling it, it back to us. To us. Come on, man! What the bro, all fuck? These people who are, oh my all these god! That's up in arms right about all kind of stuff. They selling they, it back to us. Oh, come on, I'm man! About the iPhone. That's some shit right there. The iPhone is made in Chinese sweatshops, bro. These people are getting paid. Yeah, shit. And we paying these it. iPhones, and we're paying thousands of dollars. <laughs> for, I like the new That's iPhones, like crazy. what twelve, fifteen hundred dollars? Uh, fourteen hundred. Yeah, fourteen. I didn't buy it yet. Bruh. I was looking at it. <laughs> but um, they're making them for like a dollar. Right. Manufacturing that, costs. Okay, so like. Look at that ROI. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. That's why they're a trillion dollar company. Yeah. Hold on. I'm trying to obtain this, right? I'm trying to. This is a whole different perspective that you just gave me. We trying to recycle fucking water bottles, get some money and save the <laughs> fucking earth. And five they're selling cents. it back five to cents. us. Yep. They're, t- they're paying you five cents to go ahead and hunt for the their 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 food. To feed back to us, we're oh, cannibals. It's called bro. capitalism, bro. Capital cannibals, like I mean, it's a fact. Capitalism is all about. But capital now, how life. do we? Okay, so how do we steer away from the situation? Do we just start wearing our own shit or what? Uh, well, manufacturing you go. Our own like, shit. Okay, or so what? but but the same, you're right, absolutely right. So you do steer away from it, but this is. And there ain't really no steering away from it. But you got to, okay. Can we like, utilize Mexico? Yeah, can you we? can. Okay, so check it out. So when you go and buy that same shirt, right? Prime example, I think we talked about it last time. You said, I said, um, if you have a dollar, right? And that same dollar can buy you 25 cents worth of four oranges, right? So that's going to give you four total oranges for a dollar, right? Mm. Now, that's what they cost in the United States. You know, four hundred get you a buck, right? But in the Mexico economy, one buck can get you twenty oranges. Damn. Now look, check it out. You can resell those same twenty oranges, twenty twenty or orange. Come on, spit oranges, up. oranges. <laughs> God, dog, <laughs> twenty oranges, right? To the states, and maybe you can resell those twenty oranges for forty-five cents per orange, fifty cents per orange. Still cheaper. Right, yeah. you know, yeah, your return on investment is yeah. it's it's doubling for the resale value of that orange yeah. or that dollar, and you're le- uh, you're letting people utilize um, the full buying power of their dollars. Correct, yeah. but yeah. imagine if if I said, "Hey guys, I live in Mexico. 
I want to take your money and I want to invest it into your own bank account in Mexico. When you invest money in the Mexico's banking account, they reinvest back into your mm-hmm. banking account. Mm-hmm. So I said, hey, 10 people, hey, let's go invest into the Mexico banking account. And it's going to show you return on investment of 7% interest savings wise. And then also we'll take around 20% and put into a CD that's going to show you a greater return on investment than our actual mutual funds. I got mutual funds for my whole entire family. Do you know my mutual funds return on investment every, every year is 3%. Average, mm. 3%. And it's fixed. I can't put more than $50,000 into my mutual fund. Can anyone utilize, um, you have to be a uh, Mexican All citizen? you need is a temporary visa. That's it. Yeah, utilize the bank. I need to put my money in that goddamn bank. So. A temporary visa. So imagine saying, okay, if you put $50,000 into a bank in Mexico, right? It's called an offshore account, just so we're clear, right? $50,000 into a legal offshore account, and it showed you a 10% return on investment. Just Let's just do it for two years. What's your return on investment? 10% return on investment. So let me ask you. 10,000. 10, 10 bands. 10 bands, right? 10 bands. Damn. So imagine if you did 20 years. Compound interest, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. Hell that's yeah. insane, right? And then you, you took out you take out a hundred thousand and, and put it into a trust account and buy a build a property in one of the upcoming places in Mexico. And then you Airbnb it out. You know what I'm saying? And you put a belly boys restaurant right next to it. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> belly boys. Yeah. But I'm saying this is the realization is like these people that are doing things differently and that are being successful, their name that is that is changing the narrative of their name and their brand. They're thinking outside of that box that they put us in, bro. Like, my son told me today, like, I, I don't want to go to school anymore, but I want to be successful. I would accept that. As long as they had the drive and the willpower to do what they needed to do. What's your perspective on um, college? Mm. You believe I think college is a business. What do you it think? is. Be a part of it. It depends. Yeah. It depends on what you want to do. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, you have have to go to college. Go to college yeah. There's no choice. Yeah. But business if, wise, if you want to learn how to, you know, be an entrepreneur, if you want to learn how to make money, you don't need college. You can find a mentor, somebody that's already doing it. Mm-hmm. You can learn how to do that. You can go on YouTube. There's YouTube. kids. YouTube University. There's people like um uh, uh um, the trap, uh, Wall Street Trapper. Wall Street Trapper. He did yeah. ten years in the pen, bro. Wallow too. Wallow did twenty. And they out here making money. Yeah, yeah. that shit crazy. Yeah. Like ten years ain't no ain't no little bit of time. <laughs> Yo, That's Wallow, big, shout man. out Wallow, bro. Yeah. Hey, yeah. look, if you hear this, Wallow, bro, can you get my man to send me my CMOS, please, bro? <laughs> I'll put my order in like almost a. Hey, <laughs> Wallow, holla at your boy, man. I, I rock with y'all, man. Look, let me get some of that sea monster, bro. Oh, That's shit. Hilarious. Yeah, that shit crazy as fuck. But yeah, bro, I've been saying, people like, you just, it's, that, it's really on. what you want to do. Hold on. That nigga Wallow did 20 years in prison, and now he just signed a $100 million contract with Barstool Sports. That's crazy. Come on, Come on, man. Come on, man. There you go. Every, it's, it, and it's Clap never too, it up for that man. It's never too late. Every age is a new age. Hey, you know I mean? and and you got to be able to tell yourself, look, yeah. come on, man. Look, yeah. There's see, and that's the thing. If Wallow got out and was like, "Yo, I'm too damn old to be doing the shit that these young niggas is doing," mm-hmm. he would not be where he's at today. Mm-hmm. Podcast is a young nigga game, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's look at the census. What does it say? I mean. I, I would like to see what the census says of what the age demographic is for people doing podcasts, people doing uh, online influencing. Like it's, it's content a, creation. You know what I mean, it's a Generation X yeah. millennial game. Like, yeah. bro, it's not for them damn uh, baby boomers. Boomers. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that man decided to change his narrative by grinding outside of the box and not caring what it looked like to the next person. He's a thought leader as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's like, bro, that is. That's mental. That's all in the mind. Bro, to do 20, a band, to do a band and see it and say, 
let's go get it. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is he downloaded so much information in a time process that he didn't go in there for being stupid. He went in there for being too smart in the first place. Mm-hmm. So that's just enlightening to me, bro. Like, yo, this dude came out and got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. That's deep. Super deep. Yeah, that shit crazy. That's crazy. Walla tried Belly Boys Burger, though, bro. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, let me ask you guys a question. Who did you guys aspire to be like growing up? Mm. And why? Was it a boxer? Was it a football player? Did you see the cars, the jewelry? Did you just want to be successful and have freedom? Who did you aspire to be like growing up and why? Yeah, good question. I'm going to let you go, J. Ray. That is a good question. Um... I would say Ludacris. <laughs> <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, nah, I mean, I wouldn't say I, I've ever aspired to be one specific person. I just kind of looked at people in hip hop. Like, because, I mean, we're all from the culture of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and. For me personally, I I've never really had aspirations of. I mean, of course, I want to make as much money as possible, but I've always just been like, as long as I'm not living on the street and I can take care of myself and provide for my family, then I'm good. Yeah, that's all I've really, really focused on, because living on the like when you just happen to see somebody who's really down, they look and just let, or maybe let drugs get a hold of them. Mm. Like, that's just a, it's a sad story because there's people who, I mean, look at like the Black Panthers. They was, yeah. a, there was a real deal organization. organization. And then the drugs, the the, the government kind of just, in a way. the government kind of forced them drugs in there and it fucked up that whole shit. UEP Newton ended up on drugs, bro. Like, damn. It, it's it's <laughs> it's a sad story, but excuse me. It just it's excuse it's, me. It's the kind of things that happen, and I've always been looking at people who are just successful and looking at the steps they take, like a Jay Z, like an E forty, as he was mentioning in the Bay. The Bay Area is all about entrepreneurship. Most of yeah. those rappers that are famous. From up, most of the rappers that have made up there, they don't have record deals. Right. They may have at one point, but for the most part, they're all out the back of the trunk. Mm-hmm. Independent, like real independence. Right, yeah. And, I mean, I can't even front. My whole life growing up, my dad had his own janitorial business providing for a family of, at one point, there was eight of us between my, fam- between my family and my step family, And it was just him... And my stepmom, I mean, my stepmom had a job, but my dad had his own janitorial business grinding, mm-hmm. grinding hard, like every night going and doing these accounts, every weekend going and doing floors and waxing and stripping floors. Like, and I did that with him for years too. So it's like, it's kind of just always been in my blood, just looking at right. your father. Yeah, his example and seeing it. And yeah. I mean, like when I really think about it, I guess it is, you know, based off the, the seeds that he planted in me. Mm. What about you, T. Walker? Hey, man, they call me T. Walker. The <laughs> Walker for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all got to understand, man. Like that, that was, that question you asked me comes without any thought. Like when you look at me, you see who? An entrepreneur, a mentor. You know what I'm saying? And you also see my father. Mm-hmm. Like that man has, or my mother, you know, and my I'm a, I'm I'm a empath- I am a image of my family, right? I'm a reciprocated image of what raised me, the good and the bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, you look at my dad; he has no filters whatsoever. So sure don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no filters. And people be like, "You just like your daddy." I'm like, "Damn right." You know, my my pops back in the day they call him Baby Greens. You know why they call him Baby Greens? Because he was about that bag. 
My pops was the only dude <laughs> living in the hood on the hill mm. with a 1999 Jaguar Pearl White, you know what I'm saying, on, on dubs with a 12 sub. Like, I, that was, I walked my pop. I see my pops talking out, so I wanted to be just like my dad. My dad, his image of him, though, right, of who he was, was a a businessman, a hustler, a father, a husband. He was everything that I idled my father. You know what I'm saying? My dad came home. I took his shoes off. You know what I'm saying? My dad came home. You know what I'm saying? I, I picked his coat up. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to make my father proud. And I don't know. People, other people see it differently. Now, you know, like we didn't see eye to eye because half the time I was trying to be like him. You know what I'm saying? I still was jag at night time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I was yeah. the shit. T walking the ball soccer, like you're not gonna tell me I'm not that guy because my dad's <laughs> that guy. You know what I'm saying? So I was that guy, I was that kid at 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 ten years old cutting everybody line, you know what I'm saying? Have a have a stack in my pocket. Me too. You know what I'm saying? I was that kid at at fifteen. I went to I was at the time I was not mentally of course i'm 15 years old bro mentally strong enough to say you know what pop i, I want to be a part of whatever you got going on i started hustling with my uncle you know what i'm saying and and in in that in that scenario i wanted to i moved out of my house to be a man like my dad right he was like yo if you can't respect my house bro you got to get out at 16 years old i was out this man house with my mm. own car own income everything you know what i'm saying but he understood like like, prime example, I moved to Mexico, and uh, my mom goes, like, yo, she was like, Facia, you got to tell him something. Like, he took his whole entire family and moved to Mexico. He was like, what the hell you want me to tell this nigga? He ain't listened to me since he was 15. How the <laughs> hell he going to listen to me now, right? Yeah. But it's that same mindset. You can't tell my pops nothing that he don't want to hear. And it's not like that stubborn, you know. Can't tell your that, ass nothing either. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> but to to answer your question, it was my father, bro. Real talk. And my father was a man of the culture. Not well, let me rephrase that. My my father was a man that created his own narrative and his own culture. And that came from his father. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather was the first black owned barbershop in Southeast Dago on the hill with a Cadillac every single year. Like that's my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Like there was Black Panther rallies at his barber shop at nighttime. Like, think about that, man. Like the the way that my cloth has been cut and designed, it's not, you know, it's not simple. Like, like we got we got levels to attain to. You know what I'm saying? My pops downloads on me. Like I'm downloading on my young jungs right now. Like, glory, legacy. You know what I'm saying? Like, they wake up one and be like, Daddy. You know, Daddy's a boss. Period. Point blank. Matter of fact, I just. I hit my I hit my little my little belly over there. He was like, "Yo, I, I want to ride with you this weekend, but <laughs> I don't want to do no work. I want to do T Walker work." <laughs> Sit back and watch the. Wa- watch. I said, "Did he what? What kind of?" <laughs> no, I want to do your kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, and it's 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 it's. it's like we make each other our own dynamic. We take from I take from you, Tell. I take from you. I take from Goody Bag. I take from some of my elders. And I create myself, right? And then when I become myself in total, the next person, that your kids, your kids, your your nephews, nieces, they follow us. Like they see who you are, right? And they want to become that dynamic. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a powerful thing, first and foremost, when they want to become... When you can impact somebody. Inner family, though. Yeah, yeah. Inner family, not outer family. Not the TV screen, not the audio, but who you see in your damn face right then and there. Mm. That's that's impactful to me, bro. Word. Yeah. So, Pops, shout out OG. <laughs> he yeah, right. but it's a long... Same thing. I mean, yeah, we OG. Both, well, I mean, he knew right off the bat, but we both came a long way it's to say our answer, Pops. yeah. What would y'all go back and tell your younger selves? Would you do anything differently? Oh, bro, I would go back and tell my younger self. All kind of game. Um, What's the biggest cr- thing? Whether it be consistency, self-confidence. These hoes ain't loyal. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I would just go back and tell nah, my younger self. Like, like, stop like, yeah. worrying about these women. Yeah. Let me get focused. you fucked up. Yeah. Focus. I mean, I can't even front, bro. 50 Cent kind of said it 
beautifully in his song. I mean, I shouldn't say, but he said it right. He said, you backwards if you chasing a bitch, stupid. Chase the money. They come with the shit. Yeah. Bro. Go they gonna it. follow you. Yeah, it's like chasing value. If you chase the value, the money gonna follow you as well. Exactly, yeah. but just go grind and just don't worry about the next time you're gonna be able to bust a nut. Go worry about the next time you're gonna be able to bust down thousand dollars, like with your partners. Like, don't find the hustle. Don't worry about finding the women. Cause yeah, that was a big part of me growing up was just chasing women, yeah, and not worrying about grinding. Mm. And I think that happens to a lot of people, a lot of young men, right? right. Chasing your dick versus you know trying to stack your pockets. Yeah, and the ones who do try to stack their pockets, they end up having all the women. Like, about you? Uh, don't pull that pistol out right now, bro. That's not a good idea. Uh, well, okay, let me. I'm when you're. T- are you talking to in current? <laughs> like, can I be a whisper in my own mind, or can I just be like just one conversation? Oh, I'm, go ahead. Okay, cause like, I'm like, yo, bro. Explain that. Okay, narrative. so all right, so, um, for me, I. You had it right, bro. Yeah. So okay, check it out. So I I was I was charged with attempted murder, att- attempted murder, first degree robbery, right? In in the first in Mobile, Alabama, right? And um, those things that I went through have been nightmares in my life every single day up until, yeah. and up until today, it's not it's not changing. It's it's ever growing. Bigger and bigger nightmares. When I gotta tell my kids, like, "Hey, daddy, where'd you get that scar from on my arm?" You know, or, "Hey, daddy, where'd you get that? What's that on your left shoulder?" Like, you know, I gotta tell my kids as they look at it, like, "Oh, it's just, you know, it's the truth." You know, daddy happened to go on vacation. These these stories start to change mm-hmm. and start to become mature as they become more mature. But I'm not, I'm, and I'm not taking away from what I went through. Right? I'm not running from my past, but. If I can go back and tell the younger me, like, yo, bro, whatever you do in your youth, do it on your own. Do it on your own. Make sure that you grind on your own. Make sure you 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 stack your money on your own. Make sure you don't split your money on your own. Make sure that you develop your self based off who you are. And also the last thing that I would tell myself is spend time with yourself. Spend as much time. Gather your thoughts. With yourself. yourself alone. Learn yourself. Learn yeah. yourself. Yeah. Know and be comfortable with being alone by yourself. Ooh, shit. You know, because when you're. I'm trying to hit niggas in the heart right now. I'm, I'm just saying, like, when you're, be, when you're by yourself, if you know who you are, when you figure. Let me rephrase that. When you discover who you are, right? You don't need anyone else. You accept. You welcome. You bring in someone into the beautiful world that you already have going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Versus figuring out. How to some, rub elbows? A, 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 a rub, fuck rub elbows. Just fucking figuring out this world within mm-hmm. itself. Like once you have it dialogued and, and downloaded in your mind, this is me. I know what I like. I know how to say yes. I know how to say no. I know where I'm going and I where I want to go and I know where I'm not going to go. And if you meet someone during that path, whether it be a, a woman, uh, a friend, uh, an influencer that might portray to be a friend, you still will not be broken because your path is already dictated because you know who you are. When you know who you are, someone can't trick you, bro. Can't play you. you know, oh, or well, even if they do, right? When you know who you are, if it don't feel right and you true to yourself, you're like, yeah, this don't feel right. I'm good. And you can walk away. When you know who you are and you love someone, genuinely in a woman, you know how to give that woman all of you, but not but not um compromise yourself. 
Have you ever went through that situation? Oh, yeah, of course. I've been married twice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Like, I've, I was married twice. One, is, one in my youth at 18, 19, and then yeah. as an adult who, when I knew who I was and I knew what I wanted. And to be honest with you, the biggest part of what I went through is my youth comes back to haunt me every single day in my current me today because I have to take care and handle my responsibilities of the situations that I had in my youth. You know what I'm saying? 